In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a health pickup. All right, so we have our character moving around, we've got our camera working, and now I want to interact with objects in the scene. And what better way to show you than how to collect an item? So let's go ahead and start off by setting up the item that we want to collect. I'm going to go ahead and go over to uh, Content, Models, Props, and inside of Props, at the very bottom, you're going to see Tuna Can. Go ahead and left click and drag that into the scene. And with health pickups and things like that, we probably want to bring them off of the ground just a little bit. Let me turn off my snap here. And let me pull them up to right about there. Okay. Now with that up off the ground, it'll be easy for the, the player to interact with and to see. And we might even add an animation to it or something like that. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's double click on this tuna can. And let's bring it up in our unit editor. Now the tuna can, as you can see here, has an actor on it. The tuna can collider is going to work as the collision component between us and the player. So the collider, you can see, is going to be static. Uh, we could set this to keyframed if we wanted this to have an animation. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave it set at static, just for right now. And I'm going to leave the mass at zero, and then we'll set it enabled. The mesh that we want to use is going to be the can, obviously, and then we can set the type of collision to box, mesh, or sphere. Okay, Let's take a look at the collision shape itself. So let's go to create, or excuse me, not create, but view, and then we want to view the physics actors. So you can kind of see what that's going to look like there. So either way, I think that will do just fine. Um, you might be able to get away with a box as well, but I think this will do just fine for us. And the shape template for this, we're going to leave set to default. So I'm going to hit Control S to save this. And then we're going to go into our characters unit. So let's go to models, characters, cat foo. And we're going to double click on his flow editor, or his um, unit flow dot editor. And we'll bring that up here. And so we have all of our code that we've we've placed in here. Now you'll notice it might look a little bit different than where we left it because I started grouping things together just to make things a little bit more organized. So to group nodes really quickly, you'll select around the set of nodes that you want to group. With them selected, you simply right click and choose group. Then what you can do when it's, once it's grouped is you can double click on the header and you can change the group title. So whenever items or nodes are grouped, you can move the group itself and it will move all the nodes that are contained within that group. So a really great way for uh, keeping your flow nodes organized as it can be very easy to get disorganized and very confused. So let's go up to the top here and what I want to do is I want to take a look at how do I get my character to collide with another object so I'm going to check for my mover to collide with something so I'm gonna to go to physics and mover and let's see if we have anything here about collisions and so get actor colliding below mover not exactly what I'm looking for. Let's go to events because sometimes you'll find it in there as well. So here I see mover actor collision. Um, so if we think about it, a mover is different from an actor. Okay, The collider that we created on the tuna can, that is an actor. And so we want to check for those types of collisions. So mover actor collision, uh, collision and you'll see that we have several outputs for this. The one that I'm looking for is the unit that we're currently touching. So I want to get a unit that is of a certain type. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to unit and I'm looking for a unit is of type. There it is. Then if we click on this little box here we can actually search for the objects that we have available to us in our content folder. And so I'm going to look for a tuna can, and there it is. 
So if it's a tuna can, we can um, go ahead and say if we're touching that, meaning if cat foo is touching that, if its uh, mover is touching that unit and it has a collision, if that's true, we want it to unspawn the item, meaning the tuna can, and then let's say that we want it to increase the health of our character. Uh, we can set that up too. We could do a little bit of debugging in that, and I'll show you how to do that too. So let's right click and let's create a branch. So we're going to go to flow control and then branch. Let's say whatever the value is of this, this is going to be the condition of our branch. And if we collide with something, we're going to check to see if that is true. If it is true, then we'll tell it to increase health. So how do I get the health of my character? Well, my character doesn't really have any health or anything like that, but I can add what's called script data. And if I hit this plus sign under script data, I can add a number. And that number I can give a variable name, and I'm going to call this health. Then I'm going to give it a default value of, let's say, 10. And so with that default value set, what I can now do is get that numeric data. So right up here at the top, we have data, numeric data. But that's not exactly what I'm looking for. I want to get the numeric data of my unit. And so I'll go down to unit first. Then you'll see data at the top. So get un numeric data. Let's use the key. The key, as you can see right here, is health. And we'll hit Enter. Then what I want to do is I want to add to my current health. So let's do, let's just do a simple addition on this. Let's do math numeric addition. So we're going to take our health and we're going to add to it. And we'll add to it one. Perfect. And then what I need to do is I need to set that data. Okay. So I need to set that health to whatever it is plus one. So let's right click and let's go to unit data and we'll say set unit numeric data. The key again is going to be health and what is going to be the value? Well whatever the value is of this. Perfect. Alright and then what I want to do is I want to print this out to the screen so that way we can actually see it. This is kind of a debugging sort of method. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to debug and I'm going to say print to screen. So this is going to look for some text and what I need to do is I need to get the health of my character and I need to print that out. Now I can't take a numeric value and plug it into text but I can convert the numeric value into a string which is what text is looking for. So I'll right click and I'll go to convert and we're going to say numeric to string. Plug in your health to numeric and we're going to take this value, whatever it is, and we're going to set it to that text on the print screen. And that's everything that we'll need there. Now, there is a couple of things that I want to do before that. Um, let's go ahead and unspawn the unit. Okay, so let's right click and go to unit. And we're looking for unspawn unit. So whatever this is, so we're going to say touching unit. Plug it in over here. And if it's true, we're going to unspawn that unit. If it's false, we don't want it to do anything. All right, and then, let's see, from the unspawn, um, let's see, let's go ahead and set that health. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and, and group this really quickly. I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to right click. Oops, let me try it one more time. Select all of them and then group. Whoop, I keep <laughs> I keep clicking off of that, I'm sorry. Let's go to group and then let's rename that. We're going to say pick up health. And then I'm going to select these right here. And I'm going to right click and group those. And so it's going to be a group within a group. And we're just going to say display 
health. Perfect. So let's hit Control S to save that. And we have our tuna can in the, the scene itself. So what we need to do now is check to see if this works. So let's hit play. And we're going to move across. And you'll see that we have picked it up and it's showing us what our health is. Now you'll see that it came up as 10. That was our default. But it didn't update that. So what happened? Let's take a look at what's happened here. So let's go to Unit Editor. And let's go to CatFu. Just do a quick inspection of this. We have our unit that's touching it. That's the tuna can. If it's true, it's not updating the health that we want. Oh, we forgot the N right here. Uh, this needs to be... Uh, we could do it right here. That's fine. Control S. And let's play. Sometimes I get ahead of myself with that with the flow editor. I want to get us going as quickly as possible. So it's showing us 10. I still don't have it correct. Did we save that? Yep, we did. Okay. So it's going to unspawn that. And once it's unspawned, we need to set that value of that. So it's going to be the it's going to be the value there. We want to add one. I'm going to set that value. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, what's happening is it's going through and it's getting that collision. And as soon as it's unspawning, it's setting that numeric data, but it's also printing out to the screen at the exact same time. And so what's happening is the print screen is happening faster than this information here because when it's told to set, it's got to go back, it's got to get that numeric data, add it back together, and then set it. And so this is always happening before then. So what we'll do is we'll offset that by saying, all right, you need to set it first and then print it out to screen. There we go. So hit Control S, go into Stingray, and hit Play. This should work now. So whenever we hit that, you'll see that it's displaying 11. So 10 plus 1 is 11. And it's disappearing and it's working as it should. So we've learned how to pick up health um, objects. We've learned how to collide with them, how to get them to unspawn and disappear, and to have the behavior that we're used to seeing. Now, what happens if, let's say, we run into it and we want it to... Uh, if we have full health, do we want to be able to pick up, pick that up? Maybe not. So you can add a branch in to check to see if your health is um, at its max level. So if it's less than 10, um, you could tell it, don't unspawn it. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll let you do that in between lessons if you kind of want to experiment a little bit more. I think you have enough to begin experimenting. But what I want to do now is I want to move on into the next lesson. And I want to continue with this health pickup because I want to show you how to use um, stories to animate objects in your scene. So we'll talk about that next.